Hello and welcome back, or I sincerely hope, welcome to both the channel and Star Citizen. I'm Loud Guns, and for this series I'll be your guide, helping you get going in the verse. I'm going to split this series up into bite-sized chunks, and I'm hoping that new citizens can either choose a single episode for some help with something that's got them stuck, or play along with the whole playlist as a step-by-step -step intro to the game. There's no point me doing a starter guide trucking around in this 890 jump and using a variety of expensive ships, so for this guide I'm going to go all the way back from the beginning and start with a brand new account myself. I'm also going to be playing on and referencing controls for mouse and keyboard the whole time. A lot of old hands will recommend that you get some form of stick set up on the go like HOTAS or HOSAS, but I think that keyboard and mouse is going to be where most players are when they're new. I'll do my best to cover everything, uh, but Star Citizen is still in alpha and there can be new bugs that crop up at random and things will change as we go. Uh, so if you do find yourself struggling with any of this, then please pop into our Discord through the link in the vid description and myself and members of our community at Frontier will be happy to help you out. So with all that said, let's get to it. So let's start right at the beginning. Uh, head to the Robert Space Industries website and create yourself an account. Make sure when you do that that you use a referral code since it will give you some extra starter cash. Mine's up on screen, but if you've got a mate who plays already, you just use theirs. And then it's time to uh, head over to the pledge store, and that's where we're going to select a game package. So my only two recommendations are the RSI Aurora MR and the Consolidated Outland Mustang Alpha. These are your two basic starter packs, and honestly I'd suggest everyone just starts with one of these. You've probably heard a few tales of SE and people playing lots of money for JPEGs, uh, but the game's fully accessible and enjoyable as long as you've got a game package. So the Mustang is a bit more of a fighter in terms of looks and hand handling, uh, but ultimately they have pretty much the same weapons loadouts. I tend to prefer the Aurora because uh, it has the added benefit of a bed which allows you to log in and out of the game on the move. But don't worry, both of these ships are cheap as chips in game, uh, so within a couple of hours you could easily buy the other one. Uh, you almost certainly won't though, since you'll set your sights on something better. So fast forward in time and you've bought a game pack and got the game installed. You fire it up and you'll hit this menu. You've got three options here. Star Marine and Arena Commander are effectively arenas for duking it out with other players in FPS and Space Combat respectively. You can also do stuff like free fly and race in Arena Commander, uh, but for now let's head to the Persistent Universe. Fairly standard MMO fare here. Uh, create your avatar with a little face sculpting here, or a little eye dying there. And you can come back at any time and change your look, so just don't overthink it would be my uh, key message. When you're done, just hit the accept button down in the uh, bottom right hand corner. So once you get to the menu, select Stanton System from the drop-down. There'll be more in the future, but for now this is where we hang out. Then select Location. You've got four options here, each a capital city for one of the four planets of the system. Each has their own flavour and we'll get around them during the guide. But for the purposes of a walkthrough, let's go ahead and select Lawville, uh, the major landing zone for the planet Hurston. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, you can select which server region you have. Uh, or you can just do best if you're feeling lazy like me. Then click set as primary at residence and uh, just OK through that pop-up menu. You'll awaken a modest hab unit in the workers district of Lawville. It's not much but it'll do for now. Uh, mouse will let you look around and when you're ready just hold down Y to get out of the bed because you've got stuff to do. Uh, holding down Y is going to get you out of any seat so uh, just remember that one. Next up, after we take a look around the room, is the interaction key, so that's default F for Freddy. Holding this down will enter interaction mode, allowing you to use your cursor and left mouse button to click on a variety of objects like this apparently broken coffee maker. Who needs caffeine? We'll use the same on the door and get out of the hab, so hold F and click the open button. So sometimes when you spawn in, you'll find yourself coming out of the door on the lower floor down here, rather than this mezzanine level. The elevator to exit though is on the upper floor, so we'll stay up here. Head to the elevator, uh, hold down F and click the button to get it to come to you. From the panel on the right hand side, we're going to click ground floor. Um, and that's going to get us heading towards the exit from this building. 
out of the elevator, follow the pathway left and then right. And you can enter third person mode by hitting F4 and F4 again to get a second camera point. We're just going to keep making left turns here as we come out and if we want to move a bit quicker we can just roll up on the mouse wheel. Uh, you can also add sprinting by holding down shift. And it's pretty quick in Lawville to get to the metro centre. Uh, we're going to be looking for the spaceport line. I'm going to zoom in on a few things as we go. Uh, if you want to do that, then you just hold F and it's a scroll up with the mouse wheel. So releasing F will just reset your view. So we will take the line towards Tisa spaceport. Um, and thankfully the train is right on time. So while we're on the train, uh, I just want to take a quick look at the most frequently used tool, your Mobby Glass. So you call that up by hitting F1, and this is where you'll see your bank balance, 25k because you used a referral code, and other details about your character such as your vitals, oxygen, and details about the atmosphere outside. The Mobby Glass has a ton of useful apps arrayed down at the bottom that we'll look at as and when we need them, but for now we've got to stop blankly looking at our screen or we'll miss our stop. So we're at the spaceport, and every major LZ has one of these, and since the game's Star Citizen, not City Citizen, they're rather useful. So follow the exit signs, head left at this junction, not right, that's the other tram line. Uh, you want to head through the customs area. Smile at the guards, um, and then head through the, uh, through the barriers until you get to some stairs on the other side. Up at the top of the stairs, we're going to find a row of yellow terminals. So airspace organization and procedures, or ASOP terminals, are where you can request and store any of your ships and claim them if they get blown up. Don't worry, it happens to us all from time to time, and at this stage in Starset, there's no real consequences apart from a short wait time for losing your ship. These are standardised at all locations, but just keep in mind that you can only call ships that are the right size to spawn on a nearby paddle hangar. A really common mistake amongst new players is getting lost and ending up at one of the garages for ground vehicles rather than the spaceport leading them to get confused over apparently not having any ships. But you were smart and you watched a guide, or maybe you're here because of something like that happening. Anyway, uh, on with the show. So if you approach the terminal, and you probably guessed it by now, but repetition helps. Uh, hold F and left click to interact with it. Uh, this will bring up your fleet manager. So our current fleet is one RSI Aurora, um, but that will change soon enough. So we just click the retrieve arrow and our ship will be waiting at hangar 9. If at any point you're like, dude, where's my ship? Uh, look at that marker that has appeared on the HUD and it has a helpful reminder of which hangar you're in. So follow the signs to the elevators. Uh, there are some over there and also some over here, and just call one of those. So you can click in middle mouse button if you want to get a better look at a terminal, and some of them you'll have to scroll down with your mouse wheel to find all of the possible results. So we want to hit hangar 9. And right here we have our ship. Um, I know it's not much, but it's enough to get us going. So the entry markers will point you towards the doors um, and you just walk up to them and hold F and we'll select enter ship. You can open the doors and drop the ladders individually if you like, uh, but that enter ship will just complete the whole animation in one go. We go also then interact with the chair and hit enter pilot seat um, and then we can get this beauty fired up. It's possible to use the interact mode to do a lot of stuff, but I believe in using hotkeys, uh, so let's start early with that. Pressing R for Romeo will enable flight ready, switching on all of your ship systems. So we can also use other hotkeys to turn systems off individually. So I will turn your power on and off, O will turn your shields on and off, and P will turn your weapons on and off. This is good if you wanted to, for example, power down your ship's thrusters, uh, but leave your shields up and charged. We're going to take a little pause here though to open the menu, uh, that's to escape, and go through options, uh, we're going to go to key bindings, and then we're going to go to advanced controls customization. Yeah, click the little plus sign next to flight movement and scroll all the way down to the bottom. 
and what we're looking for here is request landing. It'll be unassigned by default, but I've bound mine to F3. So if we come back out of the menu, uh, the reason for that is if we free look above ourselves by holding Z and using the mouse, we'll see that before we try to take off, we've got a one big metallic problem in our way in the form of the hangar door. So we need to hit our newly bound key to request takeoff permissions to get air traffic control to open that up for us. So cool, that's moving. Just like on foot, you can use F4 to look outside of your ship in third person mode. And when you're ready and the uh, hangar door is opened, you can use space to strafe upwards and out of the hangar. The free look key Z can also be used in third person mode, uh, and that can just help you make sure you don't scratch the paint. So now we're out of the hangar, uh, it's basic flight control time. So Q and E will roll your ship to the left and the right as well as space to strafe upwards, control will strafe down, and we've got WSAD to strafe forward, back, left and right. Meanwhile, in your other hand, your mouse will control the pitch of your ship, so basically where your nose is pointing. But we're kind of blocking the parking here at Lawville, so we'll get on our way. So hold down W to thrust forward and point your nose towards the sky. So we're going a little bit slow here, uh, so when you're ready just roll up on the mouse wheel and that will move your speed limiter up. And don't know about you but my finger's getting a bit tired from holding down W all this time so press C to turn on cruise control. So over on the velocity ladder on the left you're going to see your max speed is the square, the triangle with the hat indicates cruise control's on and the little arrow shows your current speed. Uh, we can also see here that the uh, gear light is lit up, that means our landing gear is still down. Press N to retract that. A uh, little bit more aerodynamic. Uh, you can also use free look when you're in F4 in the third person mode. And hold F4 and press the star on your number pad if you ever want to just reset it. Over on the right we've got our altitude meter. Uh, we've also got details of our weapons. How much fuel we've currently got and stocks of things like flares. And right in the middle we've got our pitch meter showing uh, the, the angle at which we're ascending or descending. So uh, now we're firmly amongst the stars, it's time to look at plotting our first sort of QT jump. So you can use hydrogen engines to get around shorter distances and break atmo, but for longer distances you want to use those. So press F2 and that will jump straight to the star map within your mother glass. Uh, so this shows the whole Stanton system, um, and this marker indicates this is where we are around Hurston. So if we double click on there, we'll just focus on Hurston and its surrounding moons. We can scroll in to look at it closer, um, and this sort of circle is Lawville where we've come from, but we want to look to go to Everest Harbour. So uh, just click on Everest Harbour with the left mouse button, set route at the top, and that will all get locked in. We've now got this line, um, and it's pointing towards our jump. There's also, I don't know if you can see it, but a small blue arrow that will point us towards the HUD marker, which is going to be that blue square. Press B to start your quantum drive spooling and calibrating, and as long as you sort of line up on that target, you can then hold down B again to make the jump. So there we go, 211 kilometers to 30 kilometers in no time. Everest Harbour is a low orbital space station that will always sit directly above Lawville, so regardless of when you come out, it's always going to be right ahead of you. And each major landing zone will have one of these, and it should generally be your first stop when you head out of Atmo for the first time. So we're going to start moving in towards the station now. Uh, you can leave your cruise control on, but just be careful of your speed. You've only got about 30 kilometers to travel, and it's possible to build up really high speeds in space. Uh, so you don't want your first trip to end up splatting into Everest Harbour. Just while we're making our way there, let's take a look at the top right hand of the screen, where you'll see a sort of satellite icon. And that indicates that you're within a comma ray. So any crimes that you commit or those committed against you uh, will get reported to the authorities. As we've got closer to Everest, we've also entered the armistice zone, so that's represented by the bullet with the cross through it. 
Uh, your weapons may still work when you're in Armistice Zone, but if you fire too much, you could build up a Chrome stat. But we'll talk a bit more about Law and Order in a later episode. As we get even closer, we get the message in red, please contact ATC to land. And this means we're close enough to request landing permission. So we're going to press F11, um, and that will open the comlink. You've got this fancy key, so you'll probably use that most of the time, but we'll show you where some of this stuff is. In your friends, you could click that icon next to Everest and, uh, and send them a landing request. Or you could hold F and look across at your comms MFD. You can zoom in on that with middle mouse button. You can click that Wi-Fi icon next to Everest Harbour. And that will do the same job. And maybe for those of you looking for immersion from this, uh, this sort of space sim, um, that might be your preferred way to, to approach this. After a little while, you'll get this uh, blue circle with the arrow in it. And that indicates your landing pad. So we will make our way over there. Um, so I'm going to build up a little bit too much speed here because I just want to show you your space brakes. So hold X and uh, hold down shift at the same time to apply boost. So boost will work sort of to, to add thrust to whatever direction you're heading in. So we want to bring it in like quite nice and slow to this. Um, it's a lot better to make a slow, slow landing than a fast fiery landing. And as you get closer, don't forget to put down your landing gear with N again. And you can use the third person mode to really just help yourself line up. Uh, for a nice smooth landing, hopefully. So I'm sure you want to test out your space legs, uh, but just before we do get going, let's take a quick look at repairing and refueling the ship. Um, so if you press F1 to open your mobby glass, and this time we're going to look at the apps down at the bottom. So we're looking for the one which is a wrench symbol over towards the right, and that opens vehicle maintenance and services. Just click auto next to any of the ones that need doing. I don't know what I dinged on the way, uh, but maybe the repairs are just a, uh, just a windscreen wipe. So when that's all done, press I to power down your ship. Um, but again, like you don't need to turn off the shields, uh, so that can, that can just save you in a pinch. Hold down Y to get out of the seat. Um, and this time we're going to look to this door and exit left. And I, uh, I can't encourage enough, just stop and take a little moment to actually enjoy the scenery. Uh, Star Citizen is a very beautiful game. But when you're ready, uh, you want to move over towards this door here. And above each of these doors is which pad you're on, so we're on pad 1. And that can be really useful for if you're just sort of stopping off at a station to pick up a friend, and you don't actually need to make your way inside, sort of if they're asking which pad you're on, you can just always look above that door. But come to the elevator and select the lobby. And just inside the lobby, uh, we're going to find some more of the ASOP terminals. So go ahead and interact with one, um, and here we'll be able to see that our Aurora is on pad 1, and we can click the floppy disk icon to store the ship. And I only mildly hate you if you just hit pause to google floppy disk. Uh, so this will store your ship safely inside the station. It doesn't matter much right now, uh, but it's a good habit to form. In the future you might have more valuable things in your ship, so if you're just always putting it away, um, then it just minimizes your risk. So just a few things to, uh, to do before we close off this episode. And first and foremost, uh, we need to head to the medical clinic to set our spawn point. So all the stations will have a medical clinic that looks just like this. It might just be in a slightly different spot. So we don't need these terminals because this is for patient check-in when you're hurt and we haven't got any injuries. Uh, but we want to look for these instead, the regeneration ones. You'll always find them under an insurance company sign. Go ahead and interact with this. Um, and here we want to transfer our imprint and confirm that. So that just means that if we do die, we're going to be spawning back at this clinic on Everest Harbour, as opposed to spawning back down in Lawville and having to go through getting out of a major LZ every time. And uh, lastly, before we go though, I, I'm pretty sure I spotted a burrito bar on the way in. So uh, you do occasionally need to eat and drink in this game, not as much as like survival games, um, but it will maybe be once per play sesh. 
but you've got something in the way in the form of uh, it being quite hard to eat through a helmet. So if you hold F and right click you'll bring up this action wheel which shows some of your additional vital signs. But for this we want to go to item actions and left click helmet unequip. Uh, so that's going to take our helmet off uh, which is going to make eating and drinking a lot easier. So if we head to the burrito bar we can uh, look at one of these delicious uh, highly varied uh, forms of sustenance and just quick buy one by left clicking. And you just hold down left mouse button to uh, to eat. And don't worry, I'm sure those animations are going to get a little better over time. So that burrito is also giving me a thirst, so you might want to also quick buy a uh, bottle of water. Uh, try and avoid those fizzy drinks. And yep, just hold down left mouse button again, and that will let you drink. You can also interact with items that are in your hand. Uh, so by holding F and looking down. And uh, if we want to maybe place something by left clicking, and then it will disappear immediately, because apparently sort of you know, future cleaners are highly efficient. So I know that might seem like a lot to take in within your first half hour or so in the verse, but you should now be really well set up to get out there and begin your quest for interstellar domination. Don't forget to drop a comment down below. Uh, not only can you let me know if this was useful to you, but if you get one in before the end of June, you'll be entered into the monthly ship giveaway. And this month we've got an Anvil Legionnaire dropship going to one lucky winner. If you're interested in more of this, uh, then in the next episode we'll be looking at seeking out gainful employment through missions, trying to make some credits rather than spending them all at the burrito bar. Uh, but just before we go, I do want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has supported the channel. Uh, we just ticked over 10,000 subscribers, which blows my mind. Uh, but if you'd like to see more of the same and more other guides and theory crafting on Starsit, consider, consider adding to that number. So with all that said though, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.